Hey guys, Ed here with another installment of our Johnny 5 build. We're nearing the home stretch on these track drive assemblies as far as the core mechanical aspects of it go. Last time we were working up front here on the drive wheel. Today we'll be wrapping up the structure of these track drives so that we can move on to one of his other bajillion sub assemblies. <laughs> First up, we'll be making these tension blocks on the 1100MX behind me. I thought this would be a great part to get a little practice in and show you guys how to set up our new multi-station mod vices to do small production runs. We'll also be modifying some off-the-shelf sprockets for the chain drives and making some small brass parts for the chain tensioner. These tension blocks attach to the rear of the track frames and work in conjunction with these tension rings we'll be making later on, and some all thread to pull back on the tension wheel and apply tension to the tracks. Using our new dual station mod vice design to make these track tension blocks sort of small production run style using multiple work coordinate systems. I'm only doing a few parts like this, but I wanted to try it just to get a little more practice with this sort of work, as well as show you guys a way that these new vices can be used. For op one, we're just holding the rough stock and it doesn't really matter if we mar the part. So I went with talon grips and pit bulls. For the op two station, we want non-marring, so I used our solid bar and car lane tiny vices. For op one, it worked out that every time I loaded up a fresh piece of stock, I could just eyeball it against the side of the vise and be located well enough. Op two needed to be precisely located, so I used that open tiny vise slot in the middle to hold a couple pieces of stock that act as vise stops. Card here to Johnny Five's page on the NYC CNC site where you can download this F3D file and check out all of the speeds and feeds as well as the work holding setup in more detail. With the slightly increased horsepower and RPM on this 1100MX prototype we're using here, I found that we're able to step up from our usual quarter inch tools we favor to 5 sixteenths easily and get increased rigidity with longer tools and a little bit better material removal rate. You'll notice that the tool is unnecessarily going to G30 between ops. So I made a few tweaks to the Tormach post and was able to get it to stop doing that. This also works when you're using the fourth axis and there's a lot of unnecessary G30 moves. So card here to a page on the NYC CNC site where you can download that and try it out at your own risk because uh, warning up front, I'm not the best programmer, but it seems to have worked perfectly for me so far. I plunged a little too aggressively there with this chamfer countersink, but I didn't notice any real ill effects there. So I just let this cycle finish running and tweaked it before the next time. Here I'm using a thread mill to pre-backside chamfer these parts before they're brought to final thickness in op 2. 60 degrees isn't ideal, but I wanted the rigidity of this tool. I didn't have anything that was 90 and it worked out fine. Then at the end of each cycle, roll the finished OP1 parts into the OP2 station and load up fresh stock for OP1. For small or delicate parts like this, I like to use a piece of Delrin scrap as an intermediary between the part and the dead blow to make sure that I hit the part squarely and don't damage it and seat it nicely in one blow. 
Next up, turning down some brass in the manual lathe to make some small parts for the chain drive tensioner. No real critical dimensions here other than this boss that receives the idler sprocket. Perfect. This part has a large clearance chamfer on it. Again, not super critical, so I just used the side of a VNMG insert to get in the ballpark of that angle. part it off then we can take it over to the mill and I'm using this 5c fixture that I found in a bottom drawer which apparently is meant for the Tormach fourth axis but I really like it mounted on the table like this for holding small parts and on the back side all we have to do is square off the sides of this boss so that it fits in the adjustment slot on the track frame Next up, forming this part's counterpart that goes on the backside of that slot on the track plate. So starting off on the mill this time, making that round boss with flatted sides, and then taking it over to the manual lathe to part off and clean up. Now we need to modify these off-the-shelf sprockets for the chain drive so that they're a little more low profile and sit closer to the bearings on their respective shafts. Well, a good rule of thumb with any shaft mounted pulley sprocket or wheel is you want it to be as close to that shaft's bearing as you can in order to minimize deflection and leverage that could damage the bearing over time. Now for those track tension rings we showed earlier, notice me narrowly escape tearing my head open on this super fly as I bend in there to set up this super glue trick. Pro tip, take sharp tools out of machine before you put your head or any body parts into it.
running flood for this heavy adaptive roughing and slotting out of these parts. As we've mentioned a few times now, flood is pretty much a requirement for process reliability with slotting and aluminum. Getting more and more aggressive with my slotting recipe as I grow more comfortable with it. At this point I'm ramping down at around an eighth inch depth of cut. And here I was trying to give you guys a better view and keep some of that flood cool out of the way. And that's all it took to get the chain reaction of melty aluminum started and those flutes loaded right up and started to bog down the spindle. Luckily I stopped it in time and was able to clean the flutes out and keep going. But it really goes to show just how important constant coolant flow is when slotting in aluminum. These tension rings are almost like washers that go around the mounting bolts for the tension wheel's axle, and we have a small piece of all thread that pulls back on these rings in order to tension the wheel. I also went ahead and started on these larger rings, which are for the tiptoe assembly. We'll be finishing those up in the next installment. Using four triangular tabs at 60 thou thick here made the parts a little harder than I wanted them to be to break away from their mother stock. I've since gone to only two tabs at 30 thou thick, plenty to hold them in place, and once removed from the subplate, the parts just twist free easily, and we can take them over to the manual lathe to bring them to final thickness and add some backside chamfers. Last up for these tension rings is a small tapped hole on the side for that piece of all thread. Finally, we have a few more quick parts on the manual lathe. The tension wheel axle, which has these deep reamed bores to accept shoulder bolts, and 3 8 16 tapped holes at the bottom of those. Same thing on the other end of that axle. Then some small stainless spacers for all of the wheels that we've made up to this point in the track drive assemblies. I really wanted this joint between the all thread and the tension rings to be permanent. So in addition to Loctite, I took some vice grips and boogered up the threads on the end of the all thread a bit so that it dug into the aluminum and self-locked. For power, we're using two 24 volt RS775 motors running into a Bainbots BB150 planetary reduction drive. This setup has been tested extensively by the Input Ink guys for power and longevity. The main designer, Terry, was able to sit on top of his Johnny Five's track base assembly and pull a van with it. So they're pretty torquey. Last up, the design called for nylock nuts on these tensioners to help them stay in place once tensioned.
That's all for this time. Next up we have this tiptoe tube, which spans the two track drives and links up to this awesome eccentric tipping mechanism that Terry and the guys at Input Inc. have worked up. And of course, busting out the fourth axis for this one. As always, hope you guys enjoyed and learned a thing or two. See you next time. I'm ready for my close-up. Last time you saw us making I don't remember what and making some... <laughs> Today we'll be wrapping up the... <laughs> First up, we'll be making these. Why am I pointing with my fingers when I have a pointer? Good God. Good God. Okay, so we start off with what? How to set up our new multi station mod vices. Uh, Maltese Tation, Maltese Falcon, Maltese Tory. <laughs> Gotta watch some shit. Remember where we start off at? On the manual lathe and on the done on the manual lathe. Lave. See you next time. I don't want to put that in the outro. Good God.